Hello world, welcome back to West of Loathing, and I really need to find a way for that not to be the default character. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, continuing the adventures of Josephine Cartwright, and this time we're starting things off with a bang. Actually, before we do that, let's just get a recap of what we can do by the partner. Okay, what do you think we should do? Oops. I have that's the wrong button. What did you do next? Mr. Smee at the real camp said they need a bunch of dynamite. Okay, we have that back for side quests. The nuns in the old mission need their relics. Milliner millinery bandits. We need El Vibrato scrap. House in the desert bandits, and that's it. Okay. So yeah. Let's go blow up some rocks. with our year's supply of dynamite. Well, here's an unusual sight. An old boat out in the middle of the desert. If this were a beach, you'd call it beached, but you can't call it deserted because there's someone in it. That someone is a skeleton wearing a helmet with horns on it. He looks pretty bored and is idly polishing the dragon-headed prow of his ship. You think maybe he's been here for a very, very long time. Let's alive splain his helmet at him. Your helmet is historically inaccurate, you know. Hmm. Those horns never actually those helmets never actually had horns on them. Hmm. That's a misconception that began when an archaeologist found a Viking buried with two drinking horns on either side of him and misunder the skeleton throws his head at you to make you shut up and go away. You got a rusty old Viking helmet. What does this item do? Plus two muscle and armor. Cool. Actually, before we go here, I want to go buy a thing. I want, I want forage. And... Found a crate of supplies bound for a nearby army fort. Looks like it fell off the wagon. Or the driver fell off the wagon and was too drunk to strap it down. In any case, it looks like it got knocked open by the fall. Um, yeah, we got some hardtack and some whiskey. Desert eating and drinking. This book contains everything you need to know to turn the harsh, unforgiving desert into your own personal buffet. Also, the best part is that the buffet also has an open bar. So let's read that. You read the book and learn all sorts of tricks for. S I have to turn the sound down, don't I again? For squeezing extra stuff out of cactuses and whatnot. You got a new skill, foraging. Unfortunately, while practicing your techniques, you accidentally squeeze the book into book juice, which turns out isn't a real thing. Oh. Yeah, very unpersistent per settings menu. Don't know why. Anyway. Okay. Back over here. wave of heat hits you from behind. You turn around to see a hell calf, pawing the ground and eyeing you with ill intent in its dead, black, demonic eyes. Let's fight it. Oh, we got this. That was easy. Cow's blood? What's that do? This is some blood from a demon cow. It pulses and scintillates and bubbles as if it's alive. Although I guess the bubbling would be kind of a problem if it were alive. Increases your muscle by 11 and your maximum HP for the rest of the day, but you shouldn't drink it. Interesting. Anyway, let's go blow some stuff up. I'm just in the main theme. Any luck finding a year's supply of dynamite? The passengers are getting restless. Yep, here you go. Good. Perfect. This'll do the trick just fine. Hang back for a bit while I get the fellas to set up the charges, and I'll let you do the honors. Smee consults with the other workers, and they inspect the rocks for a time. 
Eventually, one of them shrugs, pushes the whole crate of dynamite up next to the rocks, and winds up a de detonator. All right, let her wear. Wait, uh, don't you have an ex? Don't you have a longer detonator cable? Nope. Don't worry, you'll just be fine. Just give me a three cap before you hit the plunger, so I have time to get under the train. Great. Three, two, one, go! Oh, wait. Go! Kablooey. Oh. The surveyors didn't say anything about a crazy rock monster. Quick, you're the protagonist. Do something about it. Hey there. Um, there's a very large and very angry looking thing, guy, standing here. Apparently it's a little peeved at having a year's supply of dynamite blown up next to its butt while it was sleeping. How are you going to handle this? Well, by outfoxing it, of course. What was that sound? Hey, listen, sorry about the whole dynamite thing. We didn't know you're alive-ish. Anyway, it's just as well that we woke you up because you picked a really bad place to nap. Mm hmm? This is a pass through, through the mountains, and it's a natural wind funnel. And that plus desert sands mean this place would be an erosion nightmare for you. You'd be wo ro you'd be worn down to nothing in just a few hundred years. You need to find somewhere on the leeward side of the mountain, where you'll be protected from the wind. The creature seems to understand. It nods its thanks and trudges away, all in a day's work. Actually, I forgot to check to see if... How's my foraging work? I get basic goods. The next level I can get high quality goods. Wouldn't mind some more. Mind a little more AP. I'll do that first. Then then I'll get the bean shield up next time. There we go, got some more AP. Well now, that is a fine day's work as I've ever seen. Much obliged, friend. We'll be getting the rest of this track laid down and head out now. Here, I'll mark out the route on your map for you, in case our paths happen to cross again. Also, there's a settlement that needs your help. Here, let me mark it on your map. You discovered a new location, the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company Camp. Thanks, but can't I just ride the train? Got a ticket? Ha, just kidding. Of course you don't, because every seat on this train is sold out. Sorry, boss. <sighs> Bye. The remains of your triumph over that crazy rock pile slash guy. Nothing much to see here now. Whee. Looks like the train moved on west. I imagine we can do the same now too. What do you think we should do next? Oh, it's the new railway camp. We might have run into some new problems. In fact, I'd say it's practically a certainty. Saddle up, crazy hooves. Um, we have a few more things to check out over here, but let, let's go see what's going on at the railroad camp first. Crazy Hooves' nostrils flare and suddenly zags off the trail into some foothills, eventually coming to a stop outside of a very fragrant mine. You discovered a new map location, Soupstock Load. Hmm. Head, well, let's go where we were before, but we can stop and smell the soup later. Hello, Alice. What do you say, Alice? There's another cemetery near here we ought to check out. Pretty big one, name of Reboot Hill. Okay, I'll add it to the itinerary. Oh, and the train stopped moving for some reason. The old iron ram. Yep, the good old bronze shark. Complaining won't make the train go any faster. You must have sleepwalked here. The guy stopped messing with his watch and started eating jelly beans? What you got there? Jelly beans. Uh, yep. Can I have one? Nope. Please. Nope. Get your own. Well, where'd you get them? Little ways south of here, from a fellow named, named a Roy Bean. You discovered a new map location. Roy Bean's House of Justice and Jelly Beans. Hmm. Interesting. This lady is still whistling to beat the band. Howdy, boss. Howdy's knee stuck again? Yep, got ourselves one heck of a canyon to get across. 
and no material for bridge building. Any ideas? Well, there's an old mine town up north called Breadwood. They opened a lumber camp after the mines dried up. If you can fix a deal with them for the lumber we need, I can handle the engineering side of things. Okay, where is it? There's Breadwood. Of course, anything you find to build a bridge out of is fine by me, but it seems like that's the simplest option. I'll see what I can do. It's one of those pay telescopes for tourists. This one was designed by a promising young artist named Edvard Munch. Let's use it. You pay your meat and look through the telescope at the big canyon. It sure is big! It, it'll take quite a bridge to get across that thing for sure. Yep. Can't go too far in that direction. You'd fall off the edge of a giant cliff. It's an invisible... Actually, there's a very visible wall. It's called the edge of the screen. Okay, so... Oh, we have a bunch of stuff now. Um... Oh god, so much stuff. What do we want first? Um, let's finish up some stuff over here before we head on. Dynamite Dan. I really want them to say a joke about how business is booming. Let's find out. Wait, what do you have to say about this place? Well, at least we know he's familiar with his merchandise. <laughs> yep, that's for certain. Sure. Ah, so we can buy a year's supply of dynamite. Or just dynamite. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we're fine here. Back on the horse. Um, go to Snake Spring. There's a skull just sort of rolling down the road towards you, like directly towards you, and when you step to one side it swerves to match. Well, let's face it down. We got this. And by that I mean she got this. is so good at skeleton killing. Press any key. Got a handful of loose teeth, and pick up the bone and examine it carefully. Crap, do we have any needles left? I have no needles. I need to buy needles. I wonder if there's any back in town. Oh, we got some forging. I got some. You drain some delicious coffee from the cactus flower stalks. Hot coffee. Whether you're riding the range or trying to recover from a big city hangover, a cup of joe is always welcome. Increase your speed by three. Well, that is a slightly scary sight. These snakes are just pouring through from a wall. An endless stream of snakes pours out of the hole in the canyon wall. Let's grab a handful. Okay. So, increase our armor. Um, summon a beam golem. And then... Let's try the Great North Blizzard. And then this. That worked really well. Ah, need more. Okay, so that costs two, two loss. That costs four. That was an expensive spell. And do this. Need more AP if I'm going to be using that a lot. Tiny key. I got a snake spleen and a snake venom bladder. They don't have enough skin. What do those do? Snake spleen is the seed of a fire, fiery humors, or at least that's what you've been told. You don't have much of a sense about humors. And this item is oh, sets an enemy on fire. A lot of people don't know the difference between venomous and poisonous. I'm not going to explain it to you, but this is what makes a snake both. Okay, so yeah, the difference of that 
is if you eat it and you get sick, it's poisonous. If it bites you and you get sick, it's venomous. That cuts the difference. Ah, okay, so here we could just fight an endless spring of snakes. Yeah, well, see? The shop has some. No, that might just. Um, I feel like I need this for some reason, but I don't know what. So we'll get it just in case. Okay, hold on to that for a while. Check the other place. Do I have a hammer? I don't think I do. Hold on, let me check. No, I don't. Let's get one. We're good here. So let's see. Yeah. I don't know what we can do with these. Let's get some just to be on the safe side. They're pretty cheap. I just use a little more rope. on this place. Oh, so many places. And then I'm just gonna go consult my list.
Okay, so let's let's check out the old millinery. Encounter a cowpoke. Trying to write up. Oh, yeah, we. I'm sorry, we can't do anything about that. The old millinery. Remove your haberdashery. Are you just making up long words? It's a hat shop. That's a weird place for a bandit hideout. Better A seems to have fallen off. Let's go inside. You walk into a millinery, millinery and find five bandits lounging around a pile of self-made hats. It's the law! Skedaddle! Bandits cattle scatter like cockroaches, each shutting themselves behind a different door. They shall have to wrangle them all individually. This pot patch of filthy floors wears a lot of hats. There's some brims. This is apparently the demo model from a player piano showroom. It's only got three songs on it. They're old children's versions of traditional songs that are in the recently invented public domain. They're all set up to play just the few first few seconds on loop. People who worked here must have hated it. We have the Yellow Rose of Public Domain, My Old Public Domain Home, and Public Domain Joe. I feel like that's going to be useful somehow. That's look like they're more comfortable to sit on than to wear. Ah, I need a needle. Let's start over here. So many brims, so little time. Oops. Well, this one looks different. Jack Jews! Yeah, that's one. Well, I saw that one move. Box of dents there. What about hat room three? Hmm. Oh wait. This one isn't dented as much. Room number four. Which one is different? Wait! This one seems to be sleeping. No, oh, you're a different hat? Apparently Ami is a different hat. Let's try room number five. Which one is it? I feel like I need to change the music. Let's put on the Yellow Rose of Public Domain. No, that doesn't do anything. Maybe like, they like Public Domain Joe. Ah, you changed the song on the piano. Is that whistling you hear? Yep. <laughs> I really like Public Domain Joe. Oh, Bandit, where did you come from? Where did you go? It's right there! What's the other one? What's my old Public Domain home? I don't know that one. Put Public Domain Joe back on. And I can't get into the office because I need a key needle, so let's write that down. Okay. What else do we have? Mm. Wait, let's head back to Dirtwater, see if they have any more. Is this 
big area down the bottom which has nothing. I wonder if we just wander around for a little bit if we'll find anything. Alright, is there anything new at the post office? Any mail? Nope. Aww. How's the jail going? I haven't gotten that first one, because I feel like there's a solution that I'm missing. Another wanted poster. The Black Hat Bandits. For horse theft and selling of counterfeit glue. Last seen headed north. Wait, north of the old mill, alright. Okay. Wait, north of? No, that's the wrong building. North toward. Okay. So that means. I mean, we'll check back at the mill and see if we come across them. To your delight, you see the silhouette of a big circus tent towering over the pines. Discover a new map! A circus! Let's go to the circus. Oh, I'm going to the circus. This is a little weird. You didn't expect to find a circus all the way out here. Sorry, had to talk to Tommy. Anyway, there's basically no one around for miles. There's a rodeo clown maintaining the ticket booth. Well, he hasn't. There hasn't been an act a rodeo since the cows came home, so I guess he's just a clown. Ugh, clowns. Not a fan. They're so creepy. When I was little, my uncle would give me nightmares with old stories about them. Eh, those were old fairy tales: demon clowns and demon cows fighting wars in hell. Right. And supposedly, rodeo clowns dress up like that because the first rodeos were reenactments of those battles, and it became a traditional thing. If you'd asked me 30 odd years ago, I'd have said you were nuts for even considering that might be real. These days, I'm not so sure. That fellow there is just a man in makeup with a crap job at a con carnival. Yeah, I know. Still creeps me out, though. Let's see what we have. As you approach, the clown puts on that basically cheerful facial expression that retail employees use when the last thing they want to deal with is a customer. But they're not allowed to say so. Let's talk to him. Um, welcome to Barnaby Bob's Perfectly Normal Traveling Circus Sideshow. How can I help you? I want to run away with the circus. Eh, aren't you a little old for that? Sorry, we aren't hiring. Darn. In that case, I'd like to see the circus. Well, you came to the right place. <laughs> but if you want to get inside, you need a ticket. And presumably you can sell me one? Why, certainly I can. That's my job, after all. For you, ma'am, a ticket will cost 5,000 meat. Say what? Does it seem a little high? I promise you, ma'am, this price is a real steal. You got over that, right? Why is it so expensive? Well now, this is no podunk little traveling circus. We've got rides, games, food, and an amazing demonstration of knife throwing skill by none other than Barnaby Bob himself. Tell me about the rides. Well, I suppose I should say ride, but we haven't had a single grizzly merry-go-round accident so, since, uh, well, since we stopped turning it on. Oh my. Tell me about the games got a ton of them. Does three count as tons? Three is more like some. We've got some of them. Oh no! What happened? Wait, no, nope, looks fine. It's just for some reason the... I, I don't know what just happened there. Stream stayed okay, but my screen just suddenly exited out to Steam. Okay. Um, tell me more about the food. We've got your favorites. Popped corn, sarsaparilla with with the fancy new bottle caps. I wonder if that's a reference to New Vegas. And get this, did you hear about the new thing in a fellow invented? Cotton candy? Yeah, I think I might have. Well, it's still patented, but we're pretty sure we figured out how it works. Well, more or less. Tell me more about Barnaby Bob. Oh, the boss is a real master of knives, let me tell you. He does this amazing stunt where he gets a volunteer from the audience up on a stage and throws knives at him. He never misses his target. 
Did you leave out the part where he puts an apple on their head or something? What? Oh, right, sure. You are doing a very good job of selling me on this. Oh, whatever do you mean. Let's attempt to outfox the clown. First, you ask for an outrageous sum of meat, and then you describe your circus in terms that make it to sound distinctly cut rate. Well, now, if you really expected me to pay that much, you'd be doing your best to make it sound like a magical paradise. On the other hand, if it really is as chintzy as you describe it, you'd be asking a price cheap enough to overcome poor word of mouth. Er, which leads me to my conclusion that, for some reason, you don't actually want to sell me a ticket. The clown starts to look nervous. Nah, nah, let's not jump to conclusions, friend. I'm just pulling your leg a bit. Clowning around like we do. It's all in good fun. So the actual price is... 500 meat. I could buy half a horse for that. Sure, but what are you going to do with half a horse? The circus is much more entertaining. We have level 4 outfoxing, so I don't know. It still seems shady to me. Pretty sure you're hiding something. Maybe you wouldn't want the marshals to find out. Wow, jeez lady, fine, you win. Look, it's on the house, okay? Just give me your hand so I can stamp you for re-entry. There. Good grief. Thanks! Yeah, don't mention it. Literally, do not mention it. Cool. I knew there was a reason I spent so much on getting that up. Um, much more AP. 36, right. Um, what was I doing? Um... Add more damage to that. Either golem. Let's increase our bean shield. I like that one. Okay. Whee! The ticket booth recognizes you and waves you towards the circus entrance. Let's take a look. So you enter the circus, the ticket booth clown shouts, Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, ma'am! In a loud and enthusiastic voice. You stroll into the circus. Actually, I guess it's more of a carnival with lots of split hairs. And find it almost entirely deserted. There aren't more than a dozen other patrons beside yourself. There are a bunch of clowns around, working at the booths and so on. More clowns than customers. Which is a little unsettling, but at least the lines won't be very long. Okay, let's take a look. What do we have here? The merry-go-round has a dirty canvas tarp over it. The sign says, Condemned until further notice. We encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult a doctor. Okay. Let's talk to our partner. Sure are a lot of clowns around here. I guess that's it. All surprising. Want a balloon? Not if a clown touched it. Well, suit yourself. This clown is presumably selling tickets to the sideshow. Howdy, miss. Can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of the sideshow? Hmm. What do you have in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the lights of day. Freaks? Not just freaks. Gosh. Well, how much does it cost? For you, 300 meat. And for everyone else, 300 meat. Yeah, sure, why not? You won't be disappointed, and in the event you are disappointed, no refunds. There you go. The sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around. And making everything look even more eerie. The clown is hanging out in there, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come in, take your time, have a good look around, just remember, no touching. On these shelves are displayed a large collection of strangely painted eggs. You see several shelves of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of colorful shapes. A small placard pinned to one of the shelves says, Clown Eggs. In the circus community, it is traditional for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an eggshell. These clown eggs are archived for future reference to ensure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It is considered taboo to wear another clown's face. I have heard of that before. But that is actually true, at least as far as I know. These must be the eggs for the clowns that work in the circus. You recognize a few of them, like the clown here in the sideshow, tent, and the ticket seller clown up front. Let's look more closely. Hey, step back, please. No touching. Okay, fine. These shelves are filled with jars, and the jars are filled with things. Really weird things. You lean in a little closer to inspect the jars. They mostly contain 
malformed and or mutated animals. Pick a limb from Eldad. Three-headed kitten. Some kind of ferret or weasel with eight legs. Ooh, spider weasel. A twisted Mobius loop of a snake without a head or tail. Weird, crazy stuff. One shell seems devoted to huge, gross, pale grubs, like fat, featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has shiny black eyes. Someone has painted its face on an apparent parody of Klaus clown makeup. Yuck. Hi, Not Notes. Welcome back. How are you doing? Let's take a closer look. A pasty white face has been painted with little blue triangles over and under the eyes. The creature has a long, thin sash of a mouth as well, and the area around it has been painted with bright red lipstick. The black eyes flash red at the thing suddenly thrashes in its jar, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth open wide, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha Got you pretty good there, missy. What What in the... What is this? <laughs> it ain't a real critter. It's made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. Got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it with. Takes a little push-button gizmo out of his pocket to show you. Should have seen your face. You about jumped out of your boots. Ha ha ha. Let's see, I think this is the first time I've seen you not streaming, not FTL. Yeah, I've, I've switched things up in the morning, so trying some other stuff for a while. You're good? That's good. This guy is a startling sight, even for a cir circus freak show. His entire head is one enormous eyeball. As you look at him, he stares back at you. Not that he's got much choice. Er, hello there, I'm Josephine. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. So, uh, the circus gig. His hands slowly curl into fists, and the knuckles turn white of tension. Er, I, s I see. Or I understand, I mean. Do you blink? Or wink, I guess? I guess not. Let's take a closer look. You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. Basically just what he seems to be at, at first glance. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump at the, well, what you would call the base of his skull if he had one. Sort of crumpled, fleshy mass the size of a fist. The squint in some imagination it almost looks like the crushed and shriveled vestigial remains of a human ha head. The second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the legs of his stool, and the legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. Okay, well, see you around. A lot of weird's definitely going on here. Is there anything over here? Should I talk to him? Oh man, there's stuff on both sides. Who's this guy? Based on his attitude, uniquely combining attentiveness and extreme boredom, we assume this cloud's job is to keep an eye on the sideshow exhibits. Howdy, miss. Welcome to the sideshow. Thanks. What? It, what's to see in here? Well, down to the left, we have our collection of spooky warped mirrors. Right here, we have exhibits of clown eggs and pickled funks. Further down the right is our freak show. Feel free to explore, and I'll be here if you have any questions. I have a question. Uh, what can you tell me about these eggs? It's a traditional clown thing. There's a placard there next to him that explains in detail. Don't get too close, please. They're fragile. Mm -hmm. All right, can I only ask him one question at a time? Uh, about these uh, people. You mean the freaks? Ain't they scream? The guy with the giant eyeball head is my favorite. Nice quiet fella. Uh-huh. If you have any questions about the other two, feel free to ask them personally. Wouldn't want to be telling tales out of school. Since the eye guy can't talk, though, you can ask me about him. Um, does he ever blink? You mean wink? Heh. Nope, no eyelids. Gotta toss a bucket over him once in a while so he doesn't get too dry. He does look a bit dry now that you mention it. Hmm, yeah, it's getting about that time. Excuse me for a minute. Ah, okay. Now that we have that, we can take a closer look. Since the clown's distracted, you take the opportunity to get a closer look at the eggs. You notice two things about them. Firstly, they're too large to be chicken eggs. You have no idea what kind of eggs they are. Secondly, they've all been broken and then very meticulously glued back together. They almost look like they've been reassembled after something hatched out of them. You quickly step back as the guard clown returns. Gives you a fair amount of side eye, but doesn't say anything. And what are the things in jars? That's what we in the business called pickled punks, a menagerie of strange and twisted creatures such as you've never before seen the like, captured and preserved and on display for your entertainment and edification. That's how the boss says it. Are they real? Real as they come, heh. <laughs> hmm. I wish I could talk to him more than once. Hmm. What can you tell me about the eye person? Not much, I'm afraid, to be honest. He joined us oh, about a year ago. Maybe a little less. Well, where did he come from? No idea. Weird, ain't it? You'd think fellow looks like that. You'd have read about him in 
All the papers, right? Well, yeah. Sure is mysterious. How did it get like that? Couldn't tell you. I bet you've got a theory, at least. <laughs> well, maybe he saw something no human fella should ever see. Well, why is he locked to his chair? Ah, you noticed that, did you? Real shame, that is. Fella's a bit unpredictable. Has a violent spell once in a while. Gosh. Don't you worry, none. I'm keeping an eye on him. Maybe we can get you to water him again. And... Oh, wait, no. That's the wrong option. Question about these people. Does he blink? Okay. Look at, the, look at these things. Take a closer look. You lean in closer to inspect the gross thing. Despite what the clown said, it certainly looks real. Whoever made it did an excellent and disgusting job. Peeking surreptitiously under the shelf, you don't see any evidence of an electromagnet or other such device. Closer look. Okay, yeah, that's that's the same. Can we like sneak behind or something? This mirror looks to be one of those weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy. So there was enough crazy looking stuff. The reflection in the mirror is short and squashed looking, folded up like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror, seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. This one makes you look really stretched out and thin. Your limbs twist and writhe like snakes as you move around. It's a bit unsettling, and your muscles ache a little, sympathetically. Gah! This mirror suddenly somehow shows you what you'd look like in clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face, painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. And the flickering lantern like looks almost like she winks at you. Her. Oops, didn't mean to step out. This man is neatly dressed, though his suit is threadbare and out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Amicably. Ow. Yeah, that. Hello there. Welcome to the sideshow. My name is Douglas. Hi, I'm Josephine. Delighted to meet you. So, uh, well, are you perhaps thinking of a tr polite way to ask what's wrong with me? Yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Josephine. I am in a sideshow, after all. It is an obvious and natural question. Wait a minute. You said that last bit without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored to two front sides, and he has another face on the back of his head, with hair cut and parted appropriately. Like Voldemort in the first Harry Potter thing. Ta-da! As he sits back down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though certainly not as much as you would expect. What in the... surprising, yes? But yes, how is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to the now back of his head so the other face can take a puff. Are you, what's the phrase, Siamese twins? Not exactly. It's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in one body? Two faces? It would be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind. With, as you say, two faces. You're right, that doesn't make any sense at all. The other face chuckles and Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. Took some getting used to, that much is quite certain. Were you born like this? I would rather not discuss how I came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. No apology necessary. Well, your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. Sounds worse than it feels, I showed you. Wait. Why are you in a sideshow? With a regular suit and haircut, you could easily pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture, but you don't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board, travel the world, and you meet such interesting people. Okay. There's a lady in here with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box. She nods politely. Er, hello. Hello there, enjoying the carnival? Sorry, I needed to grab a cough drop. Well, it's interesting. She smiles slightly. Yes, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Well, what's your name? I'm Janet. And you? I'm Josephine. Er, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Josephine. Why are you in a box? That's a rather personal question, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Only teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? Um, sure? Janet whistles to signal the clown and he moseys over. He unlocks the door in the front of the box, throws it open with a theatrical flourish. 
Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes. Ticking clockwork and gears, and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, slosh through tubes. Large bellow near the top inflates, then begins to slowly deflate. What do you think? It's amazing. Never seen anything like it. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. It's certainly educational, I imagine. The large tank on the left is my stomach, if you'd like to see what I have for lunch today. Take a look. You watch the various liquids slosh around in their tank, and pipes form in it. Weird. Gross. But it is indeed educational. You got a perk, anatomical learning. Look what that does. How did this happen? Were you in some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about that. Of course, sorry. It must be a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases into a very slight grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it was nice to meet you, Janet. So long. Good luck, Josephine. Let's see, what does that perk do? You know what, what makes a human being tick, and how to stop one from ticking. Come to that. Ooh, plus three melee attack damage. Anything else we can say to her? Um, how are you feeling? If you're referring to my condition, don't worry. I've grown accustomed to it, more or less. Oh, wait. No. no yeah, we, we did that already. Now, is there anything else we can do with this person lured to the side? Okay, we've already looked at those, and those. Nothing new there. Nothing new there. Nothing new there. Okay. What class am I? I am a bean slinger. Using the magic of beans to do magic things. Okay, let's see. Hot food! Red Hots, calls the clown behind this food stand. Red Hots, footlongs, two kinds of mustard. There's also a small sign that says lost and found. Hmm. The clown grins and gestures at the little charcoal grill behind him. Howdy, ma'am. Interested in a hot footlong sausage? Well, how much are they? 250 meat. With your choice of condiments, that is an expensive... I'm exchanging 250 meat for one meat. This seems silly. What are the condiments? I've got onions, pickle relish, three kinds of mustard, two kinds of ketchup. What kinds of mustard? Brown, yellow, and blue. Blue? Blue mustard? Ah, uh, seems like I'm all out of the blue. Sorry. What kinds of ketchup do you have? Yep, both ketchup and catsup. Hmm. Uh, no thanks. I'm gonna see the lost and found. Wait, what are they made of? What do you mean? They're pork. What else do you make a sausage of? Well, I was wondering if you had a vegetarian option. Lady, this is a carnival, not a herbival. You've been saving that one up, haven't you? For years. Thank you, ma'am. Are they actually a foot long? 12 inches? Because a lot, a lot of guys say that, but I'm just going to stop you right there, seeing as there's ladies and children present. You want one or not? Um, I'd like to see the lost and found. Oh, sure thing. What'd you lose? Er, nothing. What, you just figured you'd see if I had anything you liked? Look, there's no such thing as an honest thief. You gotta pick one or the other. I'm sorry. Okay, so we need to find someone that something something that someone has lost. Let's talk to the cold drink sender. Howdy, ma'am. Care to treat yourself to an ice cold soft drink? You said you're selling them in bottles. That's right. Got the newfangled crown cork bottle caps and all. Well, what kinds do you have? Got root beer, ginger beer, and sarsaparilla. What about vanilla? Nope. How about vanilla? Nope. Wait, why could I ask that twice? Black cherry. Orange, more black cherry, cream soda, cola, grape, diet plain tap water. I'm just stuck in a loop, aren't I? What kinds do you have again? Do you make them yourself? If you're asking if we have a wagon dedicated to brewing and bottling three different kinds of sodas in our traveling carnival, no. We stock up as we pass through large towns. Ah, how much are they? 205 meat. 205? It's for the deposit on the bottle. Eh, we'll pass on that for now. Wait, tepid candy? Cotton candy, calls the clown behind 
Ah, of course, because it's hot, cool, and this is another temperature. It makes a fweet noise with a side whistle. Come try this just invented confectionery delight. Step right up, miss. Step up and try one of the world's newest candy sensations. What is it? Cotton candy. The finest in several senses this of the word spun sugar. Created through a revolutionary new process. So light and sweet and fluffy, it's like eating butterfly dreams and kitten wishes. Wee you! So it isn't actually made of cotton? I don't like cotton candy, actually. Just as a side note. What? No! Cotton is indigestible, no matter how much chocolate you cover it. Found that out the hard way, did you? Wee you! How do you make it? You pass a metal box with a wide funnel coming out of the top. This little machine right here. Can't tell you how it works, much as I'd like to brag. It's a trade secret. You invented it? Not as such. A couple dentists down south were the first ones. Dentists! Go figure! Fweeyood! But after hearing about it, I managed to figure out how it works. Made a few improvements with my design, too. Well, now I'm really curious. Sorry, miss. These secrets are in the box are for nobody's eyes but my own. Fweeyood! I'd be happy to sell you some of the cotton candy, though. How much does it cost? 300 meat! Mm, never mind. What's this person? This clown here is selling rubber toy balloons. When he sees you, he has attention. He smiles and waggles the balloons at you enticingly. Howdy there, miss. Interest you in a toy balloon? How much are they? Few, just 30 meat. Ooh, that's nice and cheap. What colors do you have? Oh, well, just take a look. Um, <laughs> right, because the game's in black and white. Red. They're all red. How do you make them float like that? Why, there's nothing to it. Heck, they all float round here, too. Ho, ho. Nice. That's a reference I would have wouldn't have gotten if I played this all the way through years ago. I'll take one. Right here you go. Got a balloon. Anything else I can do for you? Can you? Tell me more about your circus. Really, it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. Oh, what would you like to know? Well, what are your traveling plans? This place you set up is kind of out of the way. What are your plans? I haven't decided yet. That's why we've set down somewhere a bit more rural. Rural. Ah. Rural. Rural? I'm bad with pronouncing that word. Keeps things relatively quiet while we scout around. Get the lay of the land and all. Ho ho! Where did you travel from? Was your previous stop interesting? Oh, northwest ish. It's a little hole in the ground kind of place. You wouldn't have heard of it. Ho ho! Why is everyone working here a clown? Oh, it's traditional. When the, what do you call them? Rodeos stopped being put in, the rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses and carnivals. Over the years, it's just become the normal thing for carnies to be clowns. It's a community, you might say. Ho ho! And finally, who's this Barnaby Bob guy? Oh, the boss is a real famous showman. Though I'm not surprised you wouldn't have heard of him around here. Ho ho! Got an, uh, got an eye like a hawk, and he's a real whiz with those knives of his. Don't miss his show, it's a real highlight of the carnival. Well, see you around. Catch you later, like an alligator. Uh, what is the balloon? It's red. Ah. I was hoping it would do something, but okay. You go behind things? Nope. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Okay, it's this person again. Wait, weren't you on the other side of the midway now? Haha, <laughs> nope. That's the other balloon guy. We just dress alike and use the same face point. Did you, we fool you? He grins and gives you a big, exaggerated look. Can you tell me more? Okay, yeah, he says the same thing. Okay. What's this person? Ah, you lost something. Hi, kids. Did you lose your parents? I lost my lucky bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, ma'am? No, but I'll keep an eye out. What's it look like? It's shiny steel and it's on a little chain. Well, let's go take a look at the Lost and Found. Wait, no. I'm gonna talk to him. Lost and Found. What'd you lose? A lucky bottle cap. The clown pulls a wooden box out from under the counter and looks inside. Appears you're in luck. This one yours? He puts the box on the counter for you to see. He turns back to his grill for a moment. Let's look. Uh, shiny bottle cap on a little metal chain, folding pocket knife, silver white handkerchief, or a box of smelling salts. Let's get the kid is their bottle cap. Yep, that's the one. Thanks. Yep, lucky cap. Presumably this belongs to that kid. 
because you can't imagine there's more than one person around who would be so into a bottle cap that they'd hang it on a keychain. Makes sense. Whee! Did you find my lucky bottle cap? Is this it? That's it, thank you ma'am. No problem, kid. It's a real nice balloon. You want to trade? I'll give you my lucky bottle cap for it. <laughs> no thanks. I like my balloon. It's red. Can we keep looking in the box? Er, ah, we can. I lost my pocket knife. Cool. By the way, I also lost my handkerchief. And my container of smelling salts. <laughs> what does it say now? Oh yeah, nothing else. Let's check these out. So the pocket knife is a little folding pocket knife that isn't going to be useful as a weapon. But you never know when it might come in handy for something. Plus, it was free. It's true. Hmm. Where'd my mouse go? I keep losing my mouse. There it is. Previously, or thankfully, the previous owner of the hanky does not appear to have gotten any use out of it. And then the smelling salts we already have. We've already seen that. I wonder. Can we do anything with any of these? Oh wait, no, that's not... I want to just talk to you. Yeah, no, I didn't think so. Just checking. Okay. Let us test our mind. Step right up, miss. Step right up, if I may say so. You have the look of an intelligent and learned individual about you. And I happen to have a game here to put those faculties to the test. What's the game? The simplest guessing game imaginable. I've got a standard deck of playing cards here. I show you all the faces, then I turn them back over and start picking cards. You guess what cards I pick, and you win! You don't shuffle them? No ma'am, if you can memorize a deck of cards that fast, more power to you. Or if you've got a touch of magic in you and want to try reading my mind, that's fine too. Just don't dig too deep, heh. <laughs> What's the prize? A ticket to Barnaby Bob's stage show, which is otherwise sold out, so it's a rare catch, my friend. Let's give it a shot. Um, ooh. 10, 20, 30 mysticality, okay. You ready? Let's give it a lot. The clown starts picking cards out of the deck and holding them up with the backs to you. You manage to guess a few, but not very many. Don't feel bad, friend. That's about average. Not good enough to win a prize, though. Okay, so I need to come back here with 30 mysticality. Okay. Write that down. I'm making a list of stuff that I need to come back to do later. Yeah, I grunt. The clown crosses his arms and grunts when you approach. The stage show ain't till later. When? Later. Yeah, but when exactly? Later. Okay. Mm, I think that's about all we can do here for now. Anything else to say? Nope. Okay. Yeah, come back here later. Um, what else do we have here? Still looking for a, just a random gang. Ooh, binoculars! These will come in handy. They also come in pairs, because well, otherwise they wouldn't be binoculars. Right, why are you guys still tied up? Oh, did I not do anything? What do you want to do with these bandits? Turn them in. I forgot to do that. Whoops. Where'd you find them? That old millinery? Yep. Of course, you know, bandits will be a lot harder to find if they didn't keep picking such thematic hideouts for some reason. Here's your reward! On the day's work. Hmm, is there anything else? Yep, we got one more. Fifth wanted post. Wanted the Gherkin Brothers for kidnapping, brining kidnapped victims, and attempted sale of human flesh for consumption. You. Last seen heading for the old abandoned pickle factory. Can't let these dastardly criminals escape justice. Wouldn't be kosher. 
Would you like to go investigate? Yeah, sure. You mark the old pickle factory on your map. Hopefully chasing them down won't get you into a real... You know. I do indeed. Okay, new location. Mm, let's see. So, where's that? That's up there. I just want to wander around a little bit, because I feel like there's something in this area we haven't discovered. Like that! The old Stern's Ranch. I knew there were some locations down here. <gasps> needles! Glorious needles. So glad I came here. Looks like Jethro's bones were d dug up by... I don't know, there's someone named here, here named Jethro. Got a charred locket. What does that do? You should call it a locket on account of how it was... Oh, you should call it a locket on account of how it was lucky to escape the fire. Hey, don't... Don't open it quite yet, because I want to save my needles. Ah, oh, there we go. Jethro Stearns. That's how I know. Devoted father, died 1895. Mary Stearns. 74. Gwendolyn Stearns. This flower is smoking. I have a smoking chrysanthemum. Plus two spell. This flower apparently still has lots of smoldering to do. Plus two spell damage. Um, I'll keep my general purpose one on for now. Between the smoke and the noise, you're gu guessing that the dangers of this outhouse are more dangerous than the average outhouse contents. Let's fight whatever's in the outhouse. It's that thing. Got a bean shield going on. Oh, we can just snipe it with pot damage. There we go. That was easy. The outhouses is now safe as houses. Outhouses. What? Anyway. By the soft light of the fading embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your noise if one hold your nose. <laughs> hold your noise, that's funny. One hand as you fish out your prize with the other. You got a toilet pistol. How's that one? The stench damage instead of physical apply five poison. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. I might, I might give that a try. Forging. I got some cactus bits. Sometimes nature provides us with very, very weird food. Increase your mysticality by three. It's a crate. A that was a weird sound. Oh, the tumbleweed makes a sound as it hits the ground. Bar soap and depressed ranger candy. Candy. Like all things for ranchers, this candy was a lot better before the cows came home. Melee damage by seven. Cool. Wait, I'm not ready for that. Let's go in the main door first. Guess one of the neighbors was to happen by and buried the bodies. Thank goodness for that. I'd have thought you'd be a nerd to that sort of thing. More than your average Jane, I guess. But I'm not a mortician. Mostly I deal in keeping folks alive. The lockbox. Let's open that. Ooh, a certificate! Wait, hey, stock certificate? What does that do? Certified and... Certificate entitling the... I'm having so much trouble reading. Reading! Speaking! What is English? This is a certificate entitling the bearer to 11 shares of United Gas Industries, a company based in Boston. Okay. Ooh, there's still some beans. Got some blackened beans. This is a plate of beans that got left in a fire for weeks. They're still edible, but you could probably also probably use them as stove fuel in a pinch. Increases your spell damage by 5. All the books on the shelf are burned, but you notice something strange. Your deft fingers find a hidden catch. And the back panel of the shelf slides away to reveal a secret compartment. There's a book inside. It's Mary Stern's diary. And then this toy box contains a single object, a creepy burnt porcelain doll. It takes a work of moment to pull the doll's voice box. You pu pull the string. The doll's eyes roll back into its head and its mouth begins to move. Hi, I'm Grace. What's your name? Well, I'm Josephine. Hi, Josephine. You're nice. Do you want to play with me? Sure, let's play. Hooray! Mary used to play with me, but we didn't get to finish our tea party before she went away. Will you help me finish it? Surely. Hooray! The game is almost over. Mary did such a good job. The doll's eyes roll back forward. Go down. Sorry. Meh. 
Go downstairs and get my cup. Do you know the magic word to make the mean cow let you into the, the secret room? No, what is it? The magic word is peanut butter. You shudder when you realize talking dolls haven't been invented yet. Mm, we'll finish the Osari up and then I'll stop for the day. Oh wait, first I want to read this diary. First page says in a little girl's handwriting, "This is the di this is the dairy of Mary Stearns." The AI in dairy has been crossed out and IA written above them. The diary starts out as typical kid stuff. You flip ahead until you notice the writing gets sh getting shakier. Found a dolly under a cactus out back, and she told me her name was Grace. Mama and Papa don't believe me that she talks. They says I got a big imagination. Grace says the cows are gonna get us, but Papa says we'll be okay because this weren't never a cow ranch. Grace says he's wrong, but Papa won't believe me. Grace says she can keep the cows away, but I have to play tea party with her. I don't like this kind of tea party, but Grace says it's important to keep the cows away. Mama was sad that they couldn't find Epi. Papa s said she's been gone so long as they should put a cross up, but Mama won't let him because she thinks she'll come back. Papa said she's only 11, how far could she have gone, and Mama started crying again. Don't want to play tea party anymore, but Grace says I have to. And the last entry, Papa was out two days looking for Joey, but of course he didn't find him. Mama cries so much. I tried to tell her him and Effie are helping keep the cows away, but she don't understand. I told Grace I'm not playing tea party again. Oh, Thoretta's getting bothered by all this reading. But she says I gotta, and if I don't, cows will eat all three of us. She says either I get Mama and Pop or Papa to play, or I gotta play by myself. Interesting. Ah, I don't have safe cracking. What's with the cow graffiti on the wall over there? Don't care for that much. Yeah, weird. I can build a crate out of hammer and nails. Got some food. Cat's eye candy and Vienna blood sausages. Cat's eye cr candy is desperately that you... Or candy that you desperately hope is not made of real cat's eyes. More spell damage. Weird cow shape thing. I'm gonna write this down, but... I'll hold off on that for now. Um, hammer, hammer and nails in basement. Mostly just because I don't know if the nails are a one time use thing. Peanut butter. The altar room. Atop this sinister-looking altar sits a gold copper goblet filled with what appears to be blood. Well, I guess we'll take it? A chill runs down your spine as you touch the goblet. You got a goblet of blood. This is a goblet of blood from a cursed altar in a spooky secret basement room. It's probably safe and fine and good. Makes sense. Okay, let's go talk to the doll. Whee! Grace's eyes begin to glow. My tea! We can finish our tea party now. Ah, sure, why not? You carefully pour the blood from the goblet into Grace's mouth. <laughs> Grace leaps out of the toy box, laughing maniacally, and climbs the r ranch house's ruined chimney. She turns toward you. See you soon! She leaps to the ground behind the house and scampers off to the northwest. I'm sure that's fine. What's the worst that can happen? Um... Oh, I also have a locket that I haven't picked yet. Locket can be locked. Okay, so yeah, that's that's it for today. So let's head back to our room because I like always like ending there. Let's go. Just go check the mail once more. No mail. Okay. Cool. Bartender doesn't need anything, does he? Nope. Oops. Didn't mean to talk to you again.
Yeah, back to our room. So yeah, today was a pretty productive day. Blew some stuff up, got to see a circus or a carnival, and did some other side stuff. I will be back with this tomorrow, and I'm sure at some point I'll stream something in the evenings, but I can't promise as to when. But yeah, I'm enjoying this, even if it is a little bit hard on my throat from all the reading. I have to have a bad time to play this. Those throats are already bothering me. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Play well.